too, but I so what I try to do there live, or at least during this recording, is I created an infinite loop for that break from Apache so I can do a video. Yes, all that hard work. So all you're gonna hear is that 16 bar loop go over and over again. It's off just a little bit, but you know what? I'm all about one tech, baby. So let's get right to it, boys and girls. Uh, I got a, another haul video, man. Knock this out real quick. Some uh, announcements for the channel. Hopefully, I'm going to post this on Saturday. But, you know, I got a nice haul here that I thought I'd do a little show and tell for you guys, man. Uh, some stuff that I've gotten recently, and hopefully the lighting will be okay for me to show off these books in gorgeous Mylar. I hope there's still sunlight out. Um, quick shout out to um, everybody. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We, a little bit of history of the channel. Lords of Longbox has been around since about April 2015. Right into around July of 2019, my channel was unceremoniously taken down for uh, alleged uh, terms of service violations. I appealed. They never, they never said anything. And to this day, if I go to my old channel, it still says... Uh, Permanently suspended, which is an oxymoron, isn't it? A suspension means it's temporary, but when they say it's permanently suspended, that doesn't make any sense at all. So I'm going to let that Apache beat kick off in the background for you guys, boys and girls. Let's get right to it. Um, these are some books that I got from my man, KRS Comics. These are KRS Comics exclusive. This, I forgot which one this is, man. I think, uh, who is this? Maybe Clayton Crane? Ah, oh, man, I'm trying to remember. Uh, but this is the gorgeous homage to the Steranko cover. Um, you can see right there. So this is Venom number 25, which is a hot took book too, by the way. So I got cover A and B, or at least the uh, Virgin, excuse me. This is the trade dress. There's the price. And this is the Virgin variant. Also, I got from Kara's Comics, this gorgeous... Mike Mayhew, Hellions number one variant, absolutely gorgeous. The trade dress, the Virgin variant, ah, uh, absolutely gorgeous. And these may be up for sale on the Lords and Longbox auction on August uh, 6th or 7th. I already forgot, man. What did I say it was going to be? Uh, we got a Lords and Longbox auction on 7th. I'll get to it toward the end of the, the haul video here. Also got these. I know it's a little bit late in these, but I finally showing these off on YouTube. I forgot to show these the last haul of thought video I did. This is a Catwoman 80th anniversary. This, of course, is the gorgeous Natalie Sanders variants. Look at that. Oh, it's so dope. She out there. Uh, make sure you check out our friends at KRSComics.com. Go to KRSComics.com. Use the discount code of LOTLB to get 15% off any KRS Comics exclusives. They have a Natalie Sanders, Harley Quinn, and Punchline uh, variant up for sale right now just so you know how many books i gotta get before i do a haul video it's about this many number of books so <laughs> let's get right to it man uh i think the last haul video or two haul videos i do i showed you the new avengers cover of this um sure it's a little late now but back in the day man when uh endgame came out or it's no infinity war i'm sorry it was an infinity war when you saw Doctor Strange do the spell with the multiple arms, then they did the new event. This is a, the newer cover than the original one from uh, Avengers. So this is Doctor Strange Annual number one, but still badass. Well, I don't know if it's that valuable or anything, but as a Doctor Strange fan, I got to have it. Next up is a quick little uh, small lot that I got from my friends at Three Men in the Basement. I think it was actually on Very Gary's live auction that Roger Levesque was on. I picked up a... Uh, Spider-Man and his amazing friends, number one. This is a newsstand, and I'll get to it in a second why that's not so rare. Uh, and Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 16, the first appearance of Monaco Rambeau as Captain Marvel. So there's multiple iterations of her because she's gone through like four or five different names, but I think this is the one to get because uh, you know she's going to appear. Um, or at least, is it her daughter? Any, either way. Anywho, uh, back to this. This is the first appearance of Firestar. Uh, this is came out in 1981, and you can tell it's a newsstand variant or newsstand cover. I won't call it a variant because in 1981, the direct stand is actually more rare or rarer 
than the newsstand because in 1981, guess what? There was more newsstand selling comics than there were comic book shops. Specialty shops weren't that giant of a thing yet until like the 90s. Up next also, look at that. I love this. Uh, what if Doc Strange had not become the master of the mystic arts? I love this issue because if you haven't, you need to look at the internal art on this. It's absolutely gorgeous. Butch Geis did the art on it. Look at the detail on that. Butch Geist did the penciling, and it looks like he and Sam Grainer did the inks on it, but look at the detail. Let me see if I can find some other pages that he did. I mean, these What If issues are awesome. You know what? They were really thick, too. I mean, Butch Geist also had a great run on uh, Micronauts, I believe. Very detailed art for its time. Look at that. Incredible art. When did this come out? Anyway? I'm kind of curious now. When it was a dollar cover price? Back in 1983. So basically it was a double-sized issue back in 1983. I'm a huge What If fan, so try to collect any of the cool ones I get, any chance I get. Got that from my LCS. Uh, all these I got from my LCS. Also, I picked up this. This is What If, number two. And I love What If. Uh, this is what if the Hulk had the brain of Bruce Banner. Now, some can argue that this is the first appearance of Professor Hulk, maybe. Obviously, there is a real Professor Hulk, but this is the first time you actually saw the Hulk speak as Bruce Banner in this comic. So, you know, surprise why this doesn't get more love as uh, like um, what if Jane Foster was Thor did, but you know. Either way, it's still a cool issue, and it's a second issue, and this baby is near mint. Look at that. All right, next up, I guess this book is a thing now. Um, it's hot again. Uh, this is Incredible Hulk Future Imperfect from 1993, I believe. It's been around for a minute, man, but it's starting to pick up again because Maestro is making a comeback into the Marvel comics. Uh, I got these from my LCS, the big to-do. Uh, so first appearance is in number one. First cover appearance is in number two. So nice. I got it twice. Um, so one of these sets will be up for auction on uh, Friday, August 7th. Next up is I've been I've been a bull on these, meaning bye, 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 man. This is uh, Strange Academy number one. This is like my third copy of number one. But this one is the Scotty Young variant. Also picked up issue number two. Number two is already in second print. That book is starting to get hot now, too. It's got the second and third print uh, craze is kind of getting crazy. <laughs> get it? Um, yeah, everybody wants the uh, second, third print variants now. What's interesting about this is besides fuck fairyland, I'm trying to remember, and you guys will probably correct me because you guys always love to because I... Uh, Apparently, I'm supposed to read everything and know everything that comes out brand new. But Scotty Young is the writer on this. Typically, he's just a cover artist and internal artist. But as far as I'm trying to remember what he wrote for Marvel, I know he wrote uh, Fuck Fairyland, but he's actually the writer on this Strange Academy tale. So there you go. Um, I had a scoop last week or a few weeks ago about, uh, shoot, it may have been earlier this week, actually. Um, I talked about uh, Franklin Richards debuting in the Fantastic Four and eventually spinning off into Power Pack. Well, guess what, boys and girls? Number 17 is the first issue that Franklin Richards officially appears and is joins the member of the Power Pack team. So there you go. That's a beautiful near mint book. And I, I've been telling you, I, I like... Nowadays, everybody's getting a first appearance, this, that, and the other. But I like the first meetings or the first time people join teams. I think everybody's bought a power pack number one. So this may be the next logical book to get if Franklin Richards does indeed uh, become part of power pack like he did in the comics. Uh, next up is another thing that we talked about was that Talisman has been pegged for a Disney Plus show. And from all the looks of it, it looks like they're going to use Talisman in the Alpha Flight show. Alpha Flight number five is the first appearance of Elizabeth to Youngman in a flashback, meaning she appears as a little girl in a backup story. But this is her first appearance. Uh, later on, she will appear as an adult. And in issue 19, she officially becomes Talisman. So Alpha Flight number 19 is the first full appearance of Elizabeth to Youngman 
as Talisman, the Shaman's daughter. Basically, she looks in the Shaman's bag in this issue, and poof, she gets a costume and becomes the sorcerer for the Alpha Flight team and Omega team and all that good stuff. But I'm telling you, with Strange Academy, magic users and all that stuff happening, and the uh, Doctor Strange into the Mortalverse stuff happening, magic users are a... I think, you know, that's the next big spec. Just get up all the supernatural heroes that you can, all the magic users. Speaking of magic, ah, you like the way I segue into that? This character's name is actually Magic. So this is the Storm and Ilyana miniseries called Magic. Now, let me break this down to you. So, Uncanny X-Men 160 is a story. Excuse me. Uncanny X-Men 160 is the story where young Ilyana Rasputin gets sucked in a limbo for a literally for a few seconds or a minute or so and pops back out seven years older and looks what we know as a character as magic well this came out a year after 160 and this gives you the story of how what happened while she was in limbo and this is storm this is the limbo version of um what's her name uh storm and it's a pretty interesting read and because basically in X-Men 160, they don't explain how she jumped into limbo and then came back seven years older, or I think it's seven years. Um, but I read this a long time ago. It's a pretty dark story. And it's pretty good. So it takes place with Belasco in limbo. Uh, so, so I have it. You know what? I, from what we're hearing, Magic will get a spinoff for Disney Plus, and they're going to use parts of this story for it. So that would be awesome because she looks dope in the New Mutants trailer. So Magic number two, number three. And this one is rather interesting. I think this is the first appearance of her Dark Child persona. And the first time you see the Soul Sword, I do believe, is in this comic. I'm trying to remember if it's in the X-Men run or the New Mutants run. So somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But she does, chronologically, this is the first time she pulls out the um, Soul Sword. And you'll see it in the back of it. Let me show you right here. She basically becomes the leader of Limbo because she defeats Belasco. And this is when she takes her Dark Child form. So there she is, wielding the lightsaber. Oops, I mean the Soul Sword. So here it goes right here. So she's summoning up her magic, and poof, there comes the Soul Sword. And in this issue, she first gets horny. Excuse me, that's inappropriate for a woman her age, but you can tell what I mean there. She grows a tail and horns, and then realizes that's not cool and <laughs> unhornifies herself. Uh, but yeah, this is a great miniseries to go out and get if they're going to be doing any stories based on this. A lot of times, those issues will be sought after by collectors as well. And um, as you can see, I mean, I'm segueing awesomely today because... That segues right into this run, which has been rumored to be used for the Scarlet Vision show. This is Scarlet and the Vision Witch. This is the first miniseries. And this is issues one through four. You got the Scarlet, Scarlet Witch, Vision, Wonder Man, Wonder Man's evil brother. I forgot his name, Scythe or Grim Reaper, I think his name. Yeah, Scythe is a different character. And look at that. Parent issues with their daddy and all that stuff. Obviously, a lot of this has been retcon with Magneto parents and all that good stuff, but still cool nonetheless. Next up is a book Mikey Sutton was talking about over on Cosmic Wonder that Super Scroll, Spider Man, and Captain Marvel were all going to be used in the MCU based off of this storyline from Marvel Team Up number 62. Go check out the Cosmic Wonder. They did a video about it, and they specifically talked about this comic. So, zoom my LCS for a dollar. Why not? And, you know what? I want to talk about one more thing I got here that's pretty cool before I get to the biggest book of the lot. I got this from my LCS, and I'm a huge Michael Turner fan. Oops. Dang. Um, man, I think it's still looping. That's crazy. <laughs> um, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous hardcover of the Michael Turner. Uh, this is Wizard Collects the Works and Comic of Comic Art Master Michael Turner, the Millennium Edition. Bonus, never before seen private gallery. It's a hardcover, absolutely gorgeous. And it shows all it's it's shows all of his previous art. Look at that. And there's Superwoman. It's everything. It's stuff is Marvel. It's stuff from DC. 
his stuff from um, Image, his stuff from Fathom. So there you go. He each has a little chapter. So we can go back a little Battle of the Planets, Magdalena. If you are a turn of Mike, if you're a fan of Michael Turner, look at that. Gorgeous. Got this from my LCS, the big to do. Of course, there's Laura Croft. Witch Braid, Laura Croft, Tomb Raider. Look at that, man. Ah, one of my favorite. Man, he was gone too soon. Michael Turner, rest in peace. But if you're interested, man, get this. This is a beautiful, beautiful companion to your Michael T Turner collection. So it's a yeah, wizard. Michael Turner, the Millennium Edition is what it's called. Uh, and to cap it off. Whoops. Boom. Only 9.6. I know. Hey, they all can't be winners, right? But I uh, finally got a hold of this, and I got it for a really good price. So this is the first appearance of the Ultimate Nullifier. What does that say? I know it's Miss America first appearance, but it also says a uh, first appearance of Ultimate Nullifier, Mako, Radioactive Kid, the new Black Knight, and the new Miss America. So this is Vengeance number one. From 2011, the first appearance of America Chavez, who is now in the 616. I don't believe this book took place in the 616, if I if I remember correctly. It's a alternate universe or timeline in the future or something. You know how the Marvel does that stuff. So, all right. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm glad I got a. This book has been hot for a minute. I never thought I'd actually find a copy in the wild, and I found a copy out in the wild, and I got it for a very very cheap price. So I'm happy to get add this to the personal collection. I'm gonna be holding on to this for a while so um yeah boys and girls so i think either tonight or tomorrow we actually have a long-term spec list that um i'm gonna drop with mikey Sutton and oh shang chi done fell down come on man oh man um i'm gonna drop a long-term spec list uh either by myself or with the boys depending on how busy they are this weekend shang chi man why are you uh why are you doing this to me uh monday is the next Comics, Tunes, and Toys live claim sale. It's going to be at 6 p.m. Pacific on a, on Monday. Tuesday will be the cover price top 10. Thursday will be the letters from the long box. But uh, probably tomorrow, we have a long-term spec list that you're going to want to peep out. Mikey got a hold of some characters from uh, upcoming Thor and Hercules. So pay attention to that one. It's going to be hot. We're going to probably drop that tomorrow. So then Monday, I have the sale with uh, at Comic, Tunes, and Toys live claim sale on Sunday. Or excuse me, Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific. And then tomorrow we'll hopefully drop that LTS and hopefully this video drops on Saturday. So until next time, boys and girls, keep digging in them long boxes. Peace out.